Hey guys, what is going on everybody? My name is Blitzwinger, ladies and gents. Look at this beautiful collection of Kingdom Hearts figures from the lovely folks over at Diamond Select Toys. So I did get these sent to me for review purposes and unboxing purposes. Of course, um, I will be honest with you guys, as far as the Kingdom Hearts series is concerned, as far as video games, uh, if we were to just account the video game side of things, I have been a pretty massive fan of Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2. I really, really enjoyed those games immensely. Now, since then, there's been about, what, I think 72 different Kingdom Hearts games? And I'm obviously exaggerating, but uh, there's been a lot of Kingdom Hearts games. So I have not kept up with all of the ones that have been, like, on the... Um, Nintendo 3DS and DS and then there was a PSP game and then there was some console games that were like remasters and then it was like uh, Kingdom Hearts 1.25 then there was like 365 days divided by two I know of all of them the problem is I've not played them so that gives you a little bit of an idea as far as my knowledge of the Kingdom Hearts universe now with all that in mind I'm actually really 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 stoked to get these because I think that a Sora is a really cool character design I remember a while back they did uh, there's a company that made uh, what was the name of that company I don't remember I think it was play arts or something like that but those figures were really really pricey so the cool thing is that diamond select toys are at a pretty awesome price point, usually speaking at least. So from my experience, I've, uh, whenever I found Diamond, Diamond Select toys, they've been at comic book stores, and I have found some of them actually at Disney stores as well. And usually they retail about anywhere from about 18 all the way up to about $25. But that's a pretty reasonable price nowadays in 2017 for an action figure. And this is no different because we're actually getting two action figures. I was a huge fan of the Diamond Select stuff that they did for Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare 2. And these look awesome. Awesome. I'm really, really, really stoked to get them out of packaging. So let's begin by taking a look at the packaging. We have, of course, Master Form Sora along with the sword, uh, soldier right here, the Shadow Soldier. And then on this side, we have the Target Exclusive Wisdom Form Sora with a soldier as well. I'm actually really happy they sent these to me for review because I would have never been able to even buy this figure because we don't have targets in Canada. So it's awesome that I'll be able to let you guys know what I think of the figure. Now, over behind those two, we have the character of Axel who looks super sweet with those weapons there and then we've got a shadow right there so those are the shadow soldiers this is just a shadow and then we've got Dusk along with Mickey so if these live up to how good they look inside packaging outside of packaging honestly I really would love Diamond Select to do more uh, like video game figures because they've absolutely killed it in my opinion with Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare 2 like those figures were great and then these look awesome. Like I would love for them to take on Destiny and take on uh, maybe some Call of Duty figures. Maybe they could do some sweet stuff with some other JRPGs like Persona 5 or something like that. That would be really, really cool to see. So nevertheless, uh, what about the back of the packaging? Well, the back of the packaging actually just has a nice summary of the entire series one of action figures. I don't know if they're gonna be doing a series two, but usually if they have series one as a number, that usually is a good indicator that there might be other series coming because if it was just one series and that's done and they were never going to plan anything else, it would just be Kingdom Hearts action figures and that's it or action figure series and that's it. There wouldn't be a number. So hopefully that means that there will be other figures that we would get down the line. Like, uh, of course, Donald would be sweet. Um, maybe we could get, uh, well, I don't know if they could do Sephiroth, but... Either way, there's lots of other characters, obviously, in the Kingdom Hearts universe, whether it be from the Disney characters or other characters from the game itself that they could bring to life. So, with that in mind, I am going to go on ahead and take a quick little moment here to get these guys out of packaging, and then I'll let you guys know what I think. Alrighty, guys, so here we have all of the figures out of packaging, and the first big nitpick I would have against these figures is the fact that they have an insane, and I mean absolutely ludicrously insane amount of twisty ties on them in packaging. For those of you that don't know what twisty ties are, they are those annoying little things that hold the figure in place that you have to like untie little by little, but if you're a toy collector, you know that there are tips and tricks to get around them, such as using nail clippers, for example, to carefully clip them away. Problem was that as I was doing that, I actually ended up poking my finger, which kind of stinks. You can sort of see like a red dot there. Yeah, that wasn't fun. But 
um, with that injury out of the way, let's talk about these awesome figures because they are certainly that quite awesome. So first and foremost, I guess we'll, we'll start with the Soras and then work our way up uh, towards the Mickey because that is probably my favorite figure out of the entire bunch, probably because Mickey's an awesome character, but also because I think that figure and that pack uh, is the best out of the entire bunch. However, this Sora and this Sora are quite fantastic as well. Um, I think it was Endurance and Bra or Courage Sora. Something. Okay, let's just call them Yellow and Blue Sora. Uh, they both come along with the soldiers right here, which are actually really nice sculpts. They don't have any articulation. Oh, sorry. They do have articulation on their arms. That's what I should have said. Uh, and I think the head too. Yeah, the head moves and the arms move. Uh, but no other articulation, I don't believe. So yeah, no other articulation. Uh, but... Uh, even though they are stationary, I think that the sculpt is cool enough to where they can be stationary. In my mind, I don't mind them not moving. Again, these are not, or I would not at least personally consider Diamond Select as a company that you go to for their amazing articulation or posability. Like, I would think of more so something like SH Figures for that. However, what I do love about the Diamond Select stuff is that you always get value. Like, they're, the figures are nice and big. The packages feel like you're getting your money's worth all the time, which is something that is becoming more and more rare with a lot of other companies. And then additionally to that, what I always like is the sculpt work and the paint work. It's always, at least in my experience, with the figures that I've either had the fortune to uh, the fortune of being sent or the figures that I personally bought myself. Like I've bought plenty of Diamond Select figures uh, like Abomination, Deadpool, um, the uh, Marvel Zombies, Magneto. Um, oh, why am I blanking right now? Sabretooth. I've, there's plenty of uh, Rhino, uh, Juggernaut, plenty of figures that I've purchased myself and I've really, really liked them. And this is certainly no different. So you can see that the sculpt is very thorough. It is uh, just detailed enough to look great, but also not busy crazy where it just doesn't feel like it's Kingdom Hearts anymore. So I think they maintain the art style, I guess, is what I'm getting at really, really well. And of course, if you buy both versions, it's cool that you have double the uh, Shadow Soldiers so you can kind of pose them maybe back to back as they are ready to fight both Sora's off or maybe Sora and Mickey off. Now... Let's take a look at the Sora figures. They are exactly the same as far as sculpt is concerned and the Keyblade that they come along with. By the way, also really cool that the Keyblade has a proper metal ring on each side. The chain, unfortunately, is just one solid piece of plastic, but it is kind of interesting that the one that comes from Mickey, which we'll get to uh, in a little bit, actually has a different complete um, design and sculpt and... Uh, uh, look so I was kind of surprised that they didn't just reuse the same exact chain So that shows you that they care for accuracy uh, of the actual designs and then you could see a nice little um, keychain in the shape of, uh, I would imagine that's Mickey's head there, so that's kind of cool. Uh, this is the classic or like the original Keyblade that you would use, so obviously it's not very fancy or anything like that. It's pretty standard fare as far as the sculpt and the detail of it goes, but Everything that should be there is there. So I think that there are no complaints there for me. I really love the paint job. It's very clean, but at the same time detailed. So like you can see the patterns on his shoulders, for example, all the little uh, designs such as the zippers and the little buttons and everything all over the outfit, like the clips right here on the legs, painted perfectly, no paint leaks on the sides and everything, which is why whenever I see stuff like this done really well, I, I honestly get confused by how companies that are way bigger than uh, Diamond Select, like massive, massive, giant, you know, Fortune 500 billion dollar businesses have such horrible quality control. I don't understand how these smaller companies do such a better job. Hmm, I wonder. Maybe it's because they care? I don't know. But either way, um, I really do like the, the paint work on this particular figure, and the sculpt work is pretty nice as well. Now, the head sculpt is pretty fantastic. You'll notice that we have a very accurate rendition of Sora, and uh, I think that they nailed that. I like the hair. That looks great. I like that it's actually like several different pieces. You can see it's not sculpted as one piece, but it makes it look a lot more kind of volume-esque, so that's cool. And oftentimes, it's actually really tough to transition something from like video games into the real world like into a 3d pattern uh and not just a 3d pattern of course i know that the games are in 3d but what i mean is like something that is tactile sometimes it's difficult to transfer that but i think they did a pretty good job with it now here is the area where a lot of people are going to complain and honestly if that's what i was looking from these figures which was more articulation and posability i would complain about it too but i'm 
For me personally, I don't care because for me, I just want him to be able to take hold in a good kind of stationary pose, maybe something with like swinging the keyblade or something like that. Uh, and that would pretty much be it because I'm not going to be like messing around with these figures too much. They would just be for display purposes, no play purposes or like, you know, posability. But I still get that it is a flaw uh, in some people's eyes. So I do want to point out that the articulation is quite limited. For example, the elbow uh, does not get quite 90 degrees. It's a little less than that. Unfortunately, it's only a single jointed elbow. So that kind of stinks. It does have a rotation, which is kind of interesting, as well as uh, the inwards and outwards movement, uh, movement. And it does go all the way the other way. So if you want to, I don't know, I guess emulate that one time when Sora broke his arm, you can do that, even though I don't know if that actually happened. Um, then we've got a rotation on the wrist, no articulation on the wrist which again stinks because anytime you have weapons that are handheld like sword or in this case keyblades it's important to have wrist articulation and unfortunately other than this little swivel we don't get anything uh, the shoulders do go about yay high and come down like so they can actually rotate around relatively well, even though he has the hoodie sculpted on. So that was kind of a pleasant surprise. Uh, this joint is quite interesting because it is like all the way up here, like in the, I guess you would call that like the rib cage or whatever. So it's like way up high in the figure. It's not right down here at the waist where you would typically expect this swivel. So that's sort of interesting. It works somewhat, but the problem is because you have this pattern right here on his belly, and that's the same case with the blue sore, of course, maybe I should actually transfer between the two of them so you can see blue sora in a little bit more detail because he does have a little bit of a different pattern on his shoulders as compared to uh yellow sora there uh but you'll notice that when you start getting into certain poses that sculpt will break up and that paint will break up and kind of look a little bit off so that's unfortunate but again that's the limitation of uh, our a limitation of these figures uh he can kick forward decently well the main issue with it is that you're not really going to get any like you know functionality out of it so you can get him kind of stepping forwards like this if you wanted to do like a stop motion of him walking but the issue is like if you wanted to do him balanced on one foot or something like that that becomes a lot more tricky it is possible as you can see but you're gonna have to kind of like have him in a bit of an odd pose like it doesn't look very natural in terms of like hey that's how i would kick someone but you can get him to pose like there i'm not holding him and i could hit the desk well okay he will fall over but as you saw before he did hold up for those few seconds that he was there uh the legs do also splay sideways there we are come in come on there we go uh is that it really i really did not mess around with this figure too much so this figure should be a little bit more loose uh i guess yeah that's it wow that's uh, a lot more limited than even i remembered because i messed around with these figures about half an hour ago because ow darn it there it goes again my finger hurts sorry 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 i should have put it on a band-aid um but there's also swivel on the legs uh bend at the knee which is single jointed and very very limited so that's a bit unfortunate uh and then there's also a joint right here at the boot and i will say that the joint down here at the boot um, I don't think that it's a ball joint because I see like a swivel point, but it is interesting because it almost functions like a ball joint. Like you do get a pretty good range of um, base and because the feet uh, in the design for Sora are so wide, you're able to get the figure to stand quite well. So that is quite awesome to see. So from there, let's transition into Axel. So this is going to be a perfect example of a character that I don't know anything about or not much about. Uh, and then we have the shadow right here. So as compared to the shadow soldier here, you'll notice that the soldier has obviously some more armor and different shading and color to him entirely as compared to the shadow. So if you're like wondering if it's just an armored version of the shadow clearly it's very different sculpts but uh what i love about these they all stand very well like they're not toppling over or anything like that so that is excellent they still do have peg holes for uh stands which i wish that all these figures came with stands if it was possible to justify giving the, us that value as well that would be tremendously cool uh, but unfortunately that does not seem to be the case and then, of course, we have Axel here, who was a lot more boring to look at because the entirety of the figures, pretty much as you can see from head to toe, is just a black robe and there's really not much there. Uh, he really personifies the idea of limited articulation because the articulation that he has on areas like his legs and everything is pretty much this, which uh, allows him to move his ankles like so. So it's like, cool, I appreciate that, but uh, you're obviously not gonna get any other function out of that. So he's gonna be standing like this and all of the articulation that you're gonna get from him is gonna revolve around his shoulders, 
arms, which actually do have a decent amount of bend on the elbow, just around 90 degrees, also swivel, so that's cool. Uh, the wrists, I believe, also yeah, rotate around, so that's neato. Uh, his weapons here are actually really, really nicely detailed, like really cool paint, and it looks sweet because when you look at it from down here, it looks a lot more red than if I were to turn it like so. Like If you look at it this way, it looks like it's mostly silver, but then just by twisting it a tiny little bit, you're like, whoa, that weapon is mostly red. So it's a nice little uh, visual illusion with the paint. So I like that. I'm not really sure how he's supposed to hold on to it properly. I think it's this way, like these are the handles. But the problem is that just does not look particularly great or awesome. Like that about is the coolest way you can have him hold them. Uh, I was hoping maybe they would sculpt the hands to have a bit more of a gap so you could hold them across the X, kind of like that. Because uh, that would have been really, really cool. But the problem is that starts bumping into his arms and his jacket and just does not look particularly great. So that's the flaw there I would point out on this figure. The head sculpt is great. I love the fact that they have nice paint shadowing uh, going on the hair so that it's not just one blank color, but actually has good detail work uh, using a nice paint wash. Uh, on top of that. And then let's move on to the absolute best of the wave, at least in my mind, and that is Dusk along with Mickey. We'll save Mickey for last, and then we'll look at Dusk here first. By the way, look at this thing. This thing is quite massive. Uh, of course, due to the design of the Dusk character, and them trying to be accurate to it, the way that they've sculpted the feet, it would be absolutely impossible to have him stand because he would just be always kind of doing that. So they thought of that and instead of just putting this thing in the back and being like, well, it was accurate, so there you go, enjoy guys, bye bye You know, instead of just doing that and being somewhat lazy, at least in my mind, they went ahead and given us a stand. So it just plugs right into the back of the figure. And since it is translucent, it's gonna probably blend quite well into your toy shelf. So that is awesome and uh, allow your figure, your dusk figure, to stand very well without toppling over all the time and you not worrying about it toppling over. So I think that that is cool. I love the design right here. The crest over top of the head looks great. The shark-like mouth looks fantastic. These really cool sword hands, very well detailed. And there's this really weird swivel joint up here. Typically, that's the kind of joint they would put down here for, like, the wrists or something. But it's actually... Like kind of cutting the bicep in half, which is really weird looking. And it does sort of break up the sculpt of the figure, you'll notice, because it creates like gaps. So it's not the most perfect joint, but unfortunately, uh, I guess due to the limitations of the sculpt, uh, that's what we get. The nice thing is that because we have the stand, you can get into some cool wild poses with this figure, like of him floating through the air. You can go ahead and tuck his uh, legs in, of him maybe jumping forwards and such. So I really do like the fact that a stand gives you so much more function uh, for a figure that would typically not be able to stand at all, so or consistently well. So it is really, really, really cool to see. And then let's move along to Mickey who is the absolute standout. A very small figure as compared to the rest of the line. For example, there he is next to a shadow. You can see that he's just a tiny little bit taller than the shadow. Uh, whereas if we compare him to Sora, for example, here, uh, you can see that he is about just a little bit above the waist uh, as far as the height is concerned for Sora. And we compare him with Axel, then he barely reaches the waistline uh, of Axel. So this figure is amazing for me personally, just due to the details. Like, First of all, clean paint job, and then look at the amount of paint that is detailed all over the figure. Like these little zippers right here, nobody would have noticed if they didn't paint that right. The silver clippings on his um, boots, very, very cool attention to detail there. The rest of the outfit looks great. I do have a paint splotch right there, so that's a bit unfortunate. Again, bad quality control, at least on my figure. I don't know if it is something that is common across the other Mickeys, so I can't really reflect on it, at least in my experience. That is something that obviously should not be there ideally. I think I could get rid of that though by just, you know, scratching at it a few different times and hopefully I'll be able to pick off that paint and not worry about it in the future. And then his Keyblade is awesome. I don't remember what this one's called. It's not Master Keyblade, but it is one of the more powerful ones and it looks glorious. I will also warn you guys, the first time that you put the Keyblade into his hand, when I put this into his hand, I was terrified. Like it looked like it was gonna break, but it is pretty sturdy. So you can kind of give it a nice push. Like you can see right here, I'm definitely like 
given it a quite a bit of a push and not worried that it would break. So it stays in there nicely. It's not loose or anything like that. So I do like that quite a bit. And the cool thing is that even while he's holding the sword, he's not going to go ahead and topple over all the time. So that was a concern of mine was that the sword would cause him to become either front heavy or, you know, basically do this the entire time. And luckily that is not the case as long as you have his feet planted well, because again, luckily he's got large feet so he can stand very, very well and give him a nice sturdy base as a result of that. He will stand and display just fine with the rest of your Kingdom Hearts collection. Also, another really nice touch on the Mickey figure. He has some really cool range of articulation, especially for a small figure. He can look up quite well. He can look down quite well. The arms come about that high. They rotate around all the way around, which is super duper cool to see as well. They also then swivel on the connection of the bicep there. He does not have a joint that allows him to bend the uh, arm, but that would really not make sense, especially because his hands are so th skinny and thin. I really think that if they put a joint, it would probably be very flimsy and cause the figure to not be able to hold the sword properly. So I understand why that was the decision they made. Uh, there's a swivel on the wrist there. There's also the, a lot of range of articulation on the legs so they can kick forwards, uh, backwards. And then the most impressive part is a really, really nice of range on the ankles. So you can really get a nice base for him to stand on and that will allow him to be very, very sturdy and uh, not be toppling over all the time, as I mentioned before. So with all that in mind, there you guys have it. As I mentioned before, of course, yes, these were sent to me for review purposes and unboxing purposes by Diamond Select Toys. But I still think that I uh, try to do my best to give you guys as thorough and as fair of a review as I possibly can. Personally speaking, I think that these are great, great figures overall. When you consider all the factors that I've talked about, and then additionally to that, a very important factor, at least in my opinion, is the cost of the figures, which again, as I mentioned before, these figures retail anywhere from about $18 to $25 or so. At least that's my experience with Diamond Select Toys. Of course, that could vary depending on what country you live in and so on and so forth. But that has been my personal experience. And I have to say, Diamond Select Toys, at least in my opinion, on a consistent basis delivers uh, value for what you're paying. So that is definitely the case with these particular two packs. I think they're cool. I think that overall, if I were to pick up any of them, I would pick up the Mickey one for sure. I think that's my personal favorite, Dusk and Mickey, two great looking designs and very well executed figures. And then I'd probably pick up one of the Sora's. I'm not particularly a big fan of the Axel two pack just because I don't really think that the figure looks particularly interesting. But then again, that's kind of an issue more so with just the character itself less uh, and less so with the figure because if that's what the character looks like and that's what the character asks for is pretty much a black robe then that's how they have to make it so it's a complaint more so and just personal preference for aesthetics so I would say that uh, if you are a fan of Kingdom Hearts try to pick up maybe one of the Sora's and the Mickey is definitely a really cool two-pack as well now again like I said before these are sent to me for review but I am not paid to actually like, you know, review the figures. And that's why I'm always upfront with like, hey, if this is a review copy, I'll let you guys know. And then additionally to that, I'll obviously uh, oh, never ever agree to an agreement where it's like, hey, you have to say that they're great or else we don't send them. Because if that's the case, don't send them. I'd rather not because that would be really, really bad to tarnish your own reputation. So thank you guys so very much for watching today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please don't forget to hit that like button. I'll hopefully catch you guys here next time. Peace out. See you later. Alligators. Bye-bye, everyone.